how Spryker and Vue Storefront support the future of composable commerce for enterprise. Wow, that's a mouthful. Alex Melkovich of Spryker is going to show you their vision of modern e-commerce for enterprise. And of course, modern e-commerce is composed and Vue Storefront is a big part of that. So sit back and relax and prepare yourself to be blown away by Alex from Spryker. Hi, welcome to the Vue Storefront Summit. My name is Alex Malkevich and I'm a front-end architect at Spryker. Today, we'd like to talk to you how Spryker and Vue Storefront support future of composable commerce enterprise. But before we dive deep into the topic, I would like to take a step back to understand more context around this topic. So let's talk a little bit about commerce enterprise complexity. We as developers always strive to reduce and be able to control complexity of our projects. However, complexity is often getting out of control when it's not taken care of, while we keep working on new features. And we want to be able to control it while also delivering more and more features and functionality. A few major contributors to increasing complexity um, is striving to deliver more engaging user experiences uh, for our customers. By creating more complex features, it will contribute to more complexity. Uh, increasing the number of new channels and touch points will also make maintenance harder and also increase the complexity even further. Trying to enable marketeers to perform their day-to-day -day job of managing the content of a system is whole another complicated topic and solving it will definitely push your complexity a few steps higher. And finally, integrations with many third-party vendors while also trying to pick the best of breed of them will drive your complexity up as this will bring lots of complicated APIs under your project that you have to first understand and then maintain. So ideally, we would want to stabilize the growth of complexity within our projects and prevent its growth as we keep working and adding more and more features to the business. Uh, and to help us take back control over complexity, now we can turn to the composable commerce enterprise. First, let's define what it is. A composable enterprise is a way of structuring your project in a modular way that allows you to change it and recompose rapidly at any moment in time due to the business needs. And one of the main building blocks of composable enterprise is packaged business capabilities. So packaged business capabilities or PBCs for short are a piece of software components grouped together around a common business capability. It is comprised uh, from the functional part that implements given capability, uh, a set of APIs and event channels for external communication. And at Spryker, we implement PBC-based architecture. So let's just take a look at what does it, in does it include inside. Uh, in essence, Spryker PBC includes infrastructure as part of the Spryker cloud, code that implements the business uh, functionality and the generated documentation right from the code. It also contains a well-defined API and events that are used for communication between another PBCs over HTTP. So you may wonder why you would choose composable commerce in the first place. And there is a bunch of reasons why you might want to consider it. One of them is PBCs enhance the collaboration between your business and IT teams, forming a so-called fusion teams that speak the same language and both understand the business well as the software already centered around business processes. Another reason is it decreases operational complexity and in turn it costs as PBCs are actually something in between the monoliths and microservices that are still modular like microservices but are less fine-grained as they're more focused around the business processes and split the same way, generating less moving parts and you that you have to maintain. It also increases reusability as you can swap different PBCs around without the hassle of something being broke as long as their well-defined APIs match. And finally, it enables you to pick the best of print vendors for your project, being able to choose best vendor that suits your business needs best from all available PBCs.
Now that we actually understand better the composable architecture and what it represents, let's take a look at how user front architecture is helping us to implement it. And uh, this is a high level overview of user front architecture that most of you are probably already familiar with. So here I will emphasize a few points that are helping to achieve composable architecture. And uh, let's start uh, with the first one. A generalizing commerce features such as compo uh, customer or product or card uh, and removing any vendor specific features from them as those are really common features in the commerce system that Fusterfront simplifies for us. And it is a pretty important part for interoperability between different PBCs. Another important piece is introduction of a composition layer. Not, a, not that it only sounds familiar, it is actually what's driving the composition in a composable architecture. Uh, last but not least, Viewstorefront pushes the API interaction to the middleware, and this is a very important point for extendability within a composable architecture, as this is the place where everything comes together in one place and interchanges everything between one another. And if we actually zoom in on the middleware part over here, we can see. Uh, it contains all the different parts from many different packages that could even come very different come from very different vendors, and that composable layer is also uh, it can be also provided by different packages or extend existing ones. And in the end, the whole middleware is basically hidden behind the composable layer that is exposed to your application. And this is quite cool concept, as you uh, as you now uh, may not even be aware that what particular composable comes from uh, what vendor uh, altogether. And this becomes irrelevant to you as a developer because you simply consume the composables, and as long as they as long as they hold the same contract. Uh, which use the front generalization part is taken care of. Uh, you don't care who is behind the particular composable and what is it doing behind the scenes, as they may uh, extend one another or they can provide more functionality or even augment one another. So this is a really great abstraction layer that hides the complexity from your application and allows for the composition to take place. And now that we've looked into how user front architecture supports composable architecture, let's take a look at what we at Spryker did with it. So as you might already know, Spryker Headless Glue API has many different integrations for many applications, such as IoT or mobile or another front ends. And today I'm really excited to share with you our brand new integration with user front that we've been working on for quite some time. And with this integration, you will get a native integration with Spryker Glue API that operates over HTTP. You get access to all the functionalities and integrations that are available in the Glue API. Also, you get access to composable capabilities implemented as a separate packages that can transform your user front application into fully fledged B2B, B2C, or click and collect, or even a marketplace. So it is up to you to decide what sets of PBCs you would like to have to then transform your default application into something different. This actually means that you can connect to your Vista front application many best of breed vendors using Spryker PBCs and composables, such as headless CMSs, checkout integrations, or any third party vendor and service like a storage or analytics. And all of them you will get as a composable package that you can integrate using a composable. So how do we achieve such composition in the first place? Well, the answer is simple, extension. And Userfront has extensions at its core. Uh, they provide first and foremost extension capabilities to developers uh, of the project. And this is a very important characteristic when you are choosing a technology for it to be extendable so you can be in control of what is going on within your application. And this is something that gives you that control. You can also extend existing functionality of one package from another package. So you can basically hook into another package's processes and augment its behavior, which is very powerful as well. And then you have an ability to provide new functionality from one another package to another. So this ensures interoperability between the packages when you install them and they have to work together. Um, all of these points above directly affect 
another important characteristic, which is upgradability, because now you have clearly defined extension points in your application and those packages that, uh, and, and another packages that every package will conform to it as a standard way of doing things. And you do not need to hack something around or access some private APIs to change something within your system as all the packages composition pieces are bound together by a standard extension API, which you can leverage and do not need to mess around. And as long as you work with this API, everything should remain upgradable and without any trouble. And this is a diagram of Fuster from hooks middleware where you can on before and on create, change or update the configuration of a specific extension of the package. Uh, and before call, after call, you can hook in the call sequence and change the way request and response works within the extension of, a, of the package. So basically everything that happens behind the API calls within your middleware is now available to you as a developer, but also as an integrator to hook into and augment or update something that you need to um so middleware has a really powerful extension point and this is a code example of user from middleware extension api where you basically have a definition of middleware extension here and inside of it we have declaration of hooks which is an object of specific life cycles uh, of the middleware and you uh, you just specify a function uh, that you would like to invoke in it so you can do uh, pretty much anything uh, you would like to, to update the configuration or request response, you're in full control here over the given middleware. So this is an example of how we may leverage the extendability of the user front middleware. Another very important part that we at Spryker integration leverage is the ability to extend the API client of the user front. This is basically a place that provides you uh, with all the different functions that are responsible to interact with the application APIs in a nice and abstract way. So you do not have to deal with uh, lower level things like HTTP or REST APIs or whatever it is. And because we have many different packages that you would like to compose together in an application, and we want to provide only specific API client functions from specific packages that control their own slice of the API surface, we have to be able to extend it from a different packages. And here we have similar extension mechanism um, inside of the extension definition, we specify an object that extends the API client methods by specifying additional API functions that later will be made available on the API client within your application, like they were coming from a single package. So you can put here as many new API functions as you want to, and they will be exposed to your Vista front application. This is an important extension point, and we use this a lot within our Vista front integration. And last but not least is the ability to extend the router of the Vista front application. As we are having many composable packages that provide different capabilities to the application, sometimes it requires to add a few new routing points to the application, and we do not want to make this a manual step during package integration in some form of a documentation that the developer have to read and then perform it as a manual step. So instead, here we are leveraging Node.js modules to hook into the Fuster front application. And then from within this <clears throat> module, we extend routes by taking all existing routes within your application and pushing onto them our own. And here you can see we are providing a route name and a pass of the route um, so that uh, it will be rendered for this route. I want to emphasize that we are not hard coding the route nor the component, but instead we leverage in Nuxt module options to specify them. And this give it, gives the ability to, to developer to actually change it, what the route should be or change what component uh, should be maybe to the custom one. But of course, these are not required as uh, we out of the box are providing some sensible defaults. So having these module options is really great way to not only customize the package, but also make it more reusable in a situation where you may have two different packages that are trying to create the same route and are basically overriding each other and creating a conflict 
in which case the developer can manually change them um, via configuration and can be happy. Uh, this is a very important aspect as it puts the developer in control of the composition of these different packages and allows them to have a final say into what the route should be in this specific case instead of us vendors forcing to use our co component or route. So this removes the limitation from the packages during the composition process on the application level and provides greater flexibility on the extension mechanism. So now that we've covered an important topic of extendability that we leverage in our integration, uh, let's talk a little bit about our plans for the future. We are working on evolving Spryker user front integration into PBCs so that all the features are structured in the packages around specific business capabilities such as PIM, CRM, CMS, checkout, you name it. So in essence, we wanted to have all functionalities to be focused around the business capabilities. And this in turn will allow us to evolve the integration into multitude of suites that will be defined by the selected set of PBCs such as B2B, unified commerce, marketplace, etc. So um, what this basically means is that you can simply pick and choose different sets of PPCs and this in turn will define what your suite will look like in the end. Is this a B2B or is this a marketplace? <laughs> or maybe you would like to have marketplace B2B as a single suite or marketplace B2C. So as you might have, might notice, the boundary is slightly blurred between all of the individual suites because it's not predefined by a vendor anymore what B2B should be and what its feature set is like. It's actually up to your business to define what a marketplace B2B should look like uh, to you and what features your business require. You are just picking those different PPCs and composing them together and now um, you will have your own unique set of features in your marketplace B2B suite or whatever you actually prefer to call it now. So this is really powerful concept that gives you this freedom of choice. So we had a lot of information already. Let's break it down a bit into a few takeaways. Firstly, we saw that decoupling by capabilities allows for a new dimension of reusability, which means that you can take and swap different PVCs around and combining and reusing them in different ways, you will end up with something new and hopefully exciting. Secondly, reducing the cost of the updates with user for middleware extensions. As we know, this is a very important topic for developers and having a clear extension points is something that allows you to pull the updates without much of a hustle. And also integration of the new packages becomes a much more easier and autonomous process, making it as cost effective as possible. And lastly, preparing your project for a composable enterprise allows you to leverage the best to breed vendors by simply being able to choose the best PBCs from a variety of vendors that suit your business needs the most and ready to be integrated in your project. It is the choice that you would always want to have as a developer and as a business. This is the main takeaways that I hope you find very exciting. I am certainly and inspiring to go on and dig deeper about this topic later on. And also, there are a couple of big names and big projects that we are currently working with uh, while building on top of our brand new integration and preparing for the production release. So stay tuned for the big releases coming really soon. You're also very welcome to give our new integration a try by heading over to our public Spryker view storefront demo project that is available at our GitHub. Also, the documentation is already available on the official Vistafront documentation website. So I'm really excited about it and hopefully you are too. We are looking forward for you to give it a shot and give us your feedback. And we are also excited to be part of the awesome Vistafront community. So thanks a lot. And now it's time for the questions. <laughs>